for the gifts of life, for the air we breathe, for the tears we cry, for every melody. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There's one of the Pharisees called Nicodemus, a leading Jew, who came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who comes from God, for no one could perform the signs that you do unless God were with him. Jesus answered, I tell you most solemnly, unless a man is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said, How can a grown man be born? Can he go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I tell you most solemnly, unless a man is born through water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be surprised when I say, you must be born from above. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. That is how it will be with all who are born of the Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. At baptism, we are born with water and the Spirit. Water is poured, or the person is immersed, and the celebrant says, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. At that moment, we are created anew for God. At that moment, we become members of the body of Christ. To be confirmed affirms this. And one says, I will live out this spirit of God that's within me. We see in the gospel, Jesus telling Nicodemus, that he must be born again from the Spirit. Not to allow himself to simply go through a moment of ritual initiation, but to live faithfully that which God promised. To live for God. To make decisions based on the very presence of God living within him. Unfortunately, if we don't nurture that spirit of God within us, it dies, it withers. And that which God has afforded us does not bear the fruit that God asks. And so we must be renewed in our spirit, renewed in the way in how we respond to God. The first readings of this week and last week speak of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the disciples, that they would now be renewed in faith and strength, and that they will go out into the world proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God, that they were bold enough to stand in the face of the contradiction that surrounded them. Our baptism is an invitation to stand in the contradiction that surrounds us, to be a sign of the presence of God, to speak of truth and for truth, to be faithful to God in all things. Pray God this day that the baptism we've received, the outpouring of water and the Spirit will come alive. And in doing so, we will live faithfully that which God affords us. That will be signs of the forties of the kingdom of God, born anew in Christ, this we pray through Christ 
our Lord. Amen. And so we pray. And our response, Lord, enlighten our minds and hearts. Lord, enlighten our minds and hearts. Let us pray to the Father whose glory was displayed in the death and resurrection of his Son. Lord, enlighten our minds and hearts. God, Father of light, you have illumined the world with the glory of Christ. May the light of faith shine in our lives today. Lord, enlighten our minds and hearts. Through the resurrection of your Son, you've opened our way to everlasting life. May all our work today be filled with the hope of your kingdom. Lord, enlighten our minds and hearts. Through your risen Lord, your Son, you send the Holy Spirit into the world. Set our hearts on far with his divine love. Lord, enlighten our minds and hearts. By hanging on the cross, your Son won everlasting freedom. May he stay with us today as our Savior and Redeemer. Lord, enlighten our minds and hearts. Almighty and ever-living God, we confidently call you Father as well as Lord. Renew your spirit in our hearts. Make us ever more perfectly your children so that we may enter upon the inheritance you have promised us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.